This is the ballsiest thing I've seen a guy in Jamie Dimon's shoes say in a very long time. So right now, the World Economic Forum is underway in Davos, Switzerland. You know, it's where all the hotshot global bankers go and they, uh, you know, go to their cocktail parties and they try to figure out hey, how they can continue to rule the world and consolidate the wealth around the world. I say that somewhat tongue in cheek, but I know many of you have certainly your own opinions on the World Economic Forum. And what happens over there and who the people are in charge, the head of shows, everything else. So CNBC is doing its, uh, at least its morning show from Davos, the Squawk Box show that they do that, you know, has been a staple for years on that channel. Jamie Dimon is the CEO of JP Morgan. And he went on Squawk Box yesterday on CNBC live from Davos, where the World Economic Forum is taking place. And said things about Trump that makes me wonder whether or not he's going to wake up today. You know, I hope he slept with one eye open, as they say. Because for a guy in Jamie Dimon's shoes to say nice things about Donald Trump from the World Economic Forum cannot be popular amongst his fellow World Economic Forum compadres. I've got the clip here, and uh, here's Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan from Davos and the World Economic Forum yesterday. Take a listen to this. How do you see the U.S. economy playing itself out over the next 12 months? This is an election year. We've yeah. been talking a lot about what just took place in Iowa yeah. and trying to understand how the American public is going to feel about the economy may ultimately uh, dictate how uh, the president is decided. Yes, I agree with that. I, I think it's a mistake to assume that everything's hunky-dory. And, you know, and when stock markets are up, it's kind of like this little drug we all feel like it's just great. You know, but remember, we've had so much fiscal and monetary stimulation. So I'm a little more on the cautious side. There- right there. I'm, I'm, it's going to continue. I got another two minutes of Jamie Dimon. But it's what I've been talking about for months now. 2023 was a great year for the stock market. After 2022 bombed out 20%, you saw, what, a 20, 25% increase in 2023, largely driven by a handful of big tech stocks. So when people want to rip me around the office or on the streets, they say things like, oh, how's your 401k doing under grandpa? Well, I mean, it's doing well. That doesn't mean the economy is in a great place. That doesn't mean small business is feeling healthy right now it's not and i can take your calls on that at 913-408-7957 i can tell personal anecdotal stories on small business and some of the struggles but jamie diamond is right to point out that the stock market going up it's like a drug but if you think that means anything for Main Street, if you think that means anything for small business, even if you have a 401k, it's great. Your 401k might be up, but if you're wondering whether or not your business can continue on, you're not exactly doing cartwheels because you have a 401k that might be up 20%. So people who are saying that are those who are completely out of touch with reality. We are facing a lot of things in, 20, in 24 or 25, and you, we mentioned Ukraine, the terrorist activity in Israel, the Red Sea, quantitative tightening, which I still question if we understand exactly how that works. I don't think we do. How QE actually worked, what the effect of negative, you know, zero rates was for all this time, uh, and obviously the politics. And, you know, and then the Ukrainian war is affecting oil, gas, food, migration. So you have all these very powerful forces that are going to be affecting us in 24 and 25. So if I was the government, I would be preparing for what I'm going to do about that, assuming things aren't good. And I just also want to point out, I I wish the Democrats would think a little more carefully when they talk about MAGA, you know, and if you travel this country, you know, and the country's unbelievable. We took our bus trip this year and Leslie Picker was on Spokane and Boise and Bozeman. People are growing. They're hungry to grow. They're innovating. It's, It's everywhere. It's not just Silicon Valley. So we've got this great hand. But when people say MAGA, they're actually looking at people voting for Trump and they think they're voting and they're basically scapegoating them that you are like him. Uh, and, but I don't think they're voting for Trump because of his family values. Now, if you look, just take a step back, be honest. 
He was kind of right about NATO, kind of right about immigration. Mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. China, Trade, China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Yeah. He was right about some of China. I don't, th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he, when he, yeah. he may have been right. He, he, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. I don't like. But he wasn't wrong about some of these critical issues. And that's why they're voting for him. And, and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to hate Trump? 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's done and, you know, the it. Democrats have done a pretty good job with the deplorables, not, hugging on to their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and listen to them a little bit? I mean, and, and I do think the economy will affect. And I think this, this negative talk about MAGA is going to hurt Biden's election campaign. Wow. That is the CEO of J.P. Morgan, Jamie Dimon. Think about a guy in his shoes saying that about Donald Trump and what kind of a backbone that takes from a guy who is one of the most prominent CEOs in this country to go on CNBC and say that the way the media and the way that Democrats talk about MAGA and MAGA voters as a whole is used as a scapegoat. You heard him say that, well, say what you want about Trump, but he was right about NATO. He was right about immigration. He did a good job on the economy. His tax policy worked. He was right on a lot of things about China. And by the way, Joe Kernan was the other guy chiming in there. He's kind of the um, conservative-ish guy who does that Squawk Box show every morning on CNBC. Uh, he's the one who was chiming in about the China virus, as he was calling it. Uh, like, Jamie, Di I don't think anyone is going to talk enough about this today, even if they talk about it. On any show, any podcast, radio, TV, it doesn't matter. For a major American CEO to say that, that is the boldest, the brashest, and the bravest thing that has been said by a corporate America CEO since... The chaos in 2020, since COVID, George Floyd, everything like that. That right there is the bravest thing said by a major American CEO. Don't count Dana White, UCF, those things. I'm talking about a guy in Jamie Dimon's shoes at the World Economic Forum in Davos saying that, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go open up a bank account with J.P. Morgan Chase. There aren't many around here, so I don't think I'll do it, but that's pretty good. John's in Kansas City. What's up, Big John? Hey. Pete, I, I, these guys that talk about how's your 401k doing three years later, it's just a diversion. Of course your 401k is going to be up. You're content, if, if, if I'm contributing 10% and the company's matching me four, it's gone up 14% every year. Of course it's going to be. But if you take somebody that's got money invested like in a Roth IRA that you don't continue to contribute to, those are down. Yeah, those those are those are still down significantly from when Biden took office. That's all I got to say. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much there. Appreciate it, John. Nine one three four zero eight seven ninety five seven. Now, listen, if you go back to when Biden took office, the S&P technically is up from when Biden took office. But the broader point is what John said right there. Uh, yeah, the S&P is up about 25 percent from when Joe took office. But the broader point that he's saying there is if you can't contribute to, let's say, your Roth IRA, right, because, well, your dollar doesn't go as far. Then even if your Roth IRA and your other accounts are up, well, what does that mean? You're not feeling even if you look at a pretty number on your computer or on your phone, if you feel like you can't get ahead because you can't put as much money away for your retirement because your dollar's not going as far, then even if your 401k and your investments are up, are you really feeling it? Probably not. 913-408-7957. To hear comments like that from the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, how many places are you going to hear that this morning? I mean, that should, that should be... Fox should be playing it. I know it's Fox's competitor, CNBC, but that is as powerful a thing as I've heard this year. From somebody in a position like that. 913-408-7957. We'll get to you. And also, I mean, listen, especially if you're a small business owner, you felt the pinch. And there was a story last night 
as I was at this fundraiser for former KCPD detective Eric DeValconeer that really stood out to me. We'll get to it all in you coming up on KCMO. It's undoubtedly the bravest thing I've seen a guy like Jamie Dimon do. And if you're a small business owner, you're feeling the pinch right now. And, you know, last night as I'm at this uh, event with the DeValconeer family, the former KCPD detective who, uh, of course, is sitting in prison right now, uh, one guy came up to me who's a small business owner, does landscaping. He's a 70 employees is what he said he's got. And he said, Pete, we were doing crazy good numbers during the Trump years. I had my best years while Donald Trump was in office. Wasn't even close. He's mid-40s now. He's been doing this for 25 years of his life. Built the business from scratch. 70 employees doing landscaping, commercial, residential all over town. And he goes, I, I, I'm literally, if this guy gets reelected, meaning Joe Biden, I'll probably end up closing the business within the next couple of years. He's like, I just can't keep up. My profit margins keep going down. My labor costs are up substantially. He's like, that's even if the guys show up to work. He said, sometimes guys don't show up on Monday. They show up on Tuesday. And what am I going to say to them? I need them on Tuesday. I can't fire them because I can't replace them. I'm just glad they showed up on Tuesday after not showing up on Monday. He goes, they've got all the leverage. And then on top of that, as he pointed out as well, he goes, the other major problem I'm having here is the cost of parts and equipment. He goes, the cost of, you know, replacing tires on my trucks has basically doubled over the last five years. Equipment for land, uh, you know, lawn care and landscaping has gone up tremendously over the last four to five years. And I've noticed that too. I mean, yeah, I remember... When I got my uh, house five years ago now in town, bought a new lawnmower for 300 bucks. That same lawnmower is now like $450. I see it at Home Depot all the time. It's crazy. He goes, my profit margins just keep going down. He goes, and we can't hire people. I'm now back working, doing a lot of the landscaping because I can't find people to do it. He goes, all my managers who were not actually in the field, so to speak, a few years ago are now back in the field. He goes, they're not happy about it, but I'm doing it too. So I'm putting my money where my mouth is because I can't find guys. He goes, and I'm, you know, he was telling me, he's like, I'm paying pretty well. I want to get the right guys. And he also said he's not going to hire illegal immigrants. So let's be honest, that makes it tougher for him. He goes, I'll hire plenty of guys that I can hire who have green cards and all those different things, but I, I'm not going to just hire illegal immigrants. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do this the right way. So those are the people. I mean, and there's many of you in that same predicament right now. Where when Jamie Dimon rightfully points out, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, that Trump was right about a lot of things. And that Joe Biden's attempt to brand every person that either did vote for Donald Trump or will again vote for Donald Trump this fall, most likely, assuming he's the nominee, as somehow MAGA MUGA awful person doesn't care about family values, accepts every bad thing that Donald Trump ever did and cheers him on. No. They're small business people here in Kansas City. They're workers, they're business owners who realize that their quality of life, the profit margins on their business is not what it was. It doesn't mean they necessarily love Donald Trump and cheer on every flaw of his. But they know what they lived through. And, you know, maybe you're in a position where you can say, well, I want someone who's got more value, more family values. That's fine. I mean, in a perfect world, I would too. I've I've said it a million times on this show. I don't like a lot of the antics. I don't like the sideshows. I don't care for it. I don't support it. I wish it wouldn't happen. But the notion that 75 million people in 2020 and, you know, tens of millions of people once again are likely to vote for this guy doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't make them people that, you know, embrace every bad quality that Donald Trump happens to possess. 
It's people who are literally fighting for their businesses and fighting for their employees as well. Remember, if you're a business and you've got 70 employees, it's a lot of pressure. That's 70 people relying on you for their well-being as well. That, that gets lost when you talk about small business owners. Your success and your business's success is contingent on the well-being of 70 families. That's hundreds of people. And that's just one example of a guy I happened to be talking to last night. And I know for many of you, you know, you have that same exact story. And uh, it's something that as we look ahead to the next 10, 11, 12 months, um, we should remember what this is really about and how this thing is going to be branded by the media is going to be ugly. It's going to be nasty. And as Jamie Dimon said, it could very well backfire on Grandpa, whether he likes it or not. The whole MAGA branding thing could very well backfire on him. Coming up, we uh, have Mayor Quentin Lucas at 730 here on KCMO. So don't miss that. Stream it if you have to. And uh, Laura Kelly, Governor of Kansas at 830. A busy morning ahead. Next, we are going to go to New Hampshire. An old buddy of mine I used to work at Fox News Radio with, Jim McKay, is now a reporter and anchor for uh, WBZ in Boston. He's been on the ground in New Hampshire. He'll give us the latest from there. Coming up just after the 7 o'clock news on KCMO 95.7 FM.